Hello everyone, this is H to the Husky Husky here. I'm going to be casting a 3 versus 3 that I played, and the map is called, like, Colony 5, 9, 8, 17, 11, 59, a bajillion numbers. I forget the exact name. Maybe you guys can post it down below. But it is a 3 versus 3 map. I'm going to be spawning as the Yellow Protoss. When I play team games, I do play as random for, for the most part. And TGS down here, which of course stands for the Game Station. He's a good friend of mine. And he is spawning as Protoss. And Wicked, who's usually a Zerg player, he also plays random in the team games. And he is spawning as Terran. And we are going against Computer X, but do not be fooled. He is not actually a computer. He is indeed a player. And his other ally is going to be Homand. I, I don't know what that means, but he is Homand, and he is the Teal Protoss, and their other ally is Jerry, the Red Terran. So, as I was going into this game, my thought process was, uh, because I, I was looking, I always make sure you see what your team composition is for your opponent. A lot of times I forget to do that. I just totally grabbed a fly out of the air. That is absolutely disgusting. Wow, that is revolting. Um, but regardless, I saw that they were two Terrans and a Protoss, so what that tells me is that they are going to do a Marine Marauder Stalker Push, or Marine Marauder and some ground units. Oh, there you go. Yeah, SCB, that's how you like it. There you go. Good job, Probe. Way to be the dominant one, and I killed the SCB. We are off to an amazing start, as I was able to kill that SCB, and I'm going to start harassing this SCB as well. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, so, I got Protoss, and I know... See, for some reason, my probe, like, I didn't tell him to do that. I told him to attack this SCB, then he went up here to attack this one. So, unfortunately, I didn't get another SCB kill. But, I should stay on one topic. The... Since I know that there was two Terran, I, I was thinking, okay, look, I got Protoss. I'm spawning in the absolute worst position. I mean, I'm going to be the one that's attacked first. I just know that going into this because of the spawn locations. I mean, I'm within, like, spitting distance of all three of these guys, so they are going to send their forces to me, and there's not a lot I can do about it, except for prepare. And since they have two Terran, there's no way we're going to be able to bust in here, because, look, they're going to wall in right here, and the other Terran's going to wall in right here, so the only person that is would be reasonable for us to attack is this Protoss, and he is in between his two allies, so if we attack there, they're going to reinforce super, super quick. So that's what they watch. Watch this epic probe juke action. Here we go. I am juking the balls off of this marine right now, and he was trying to kill it. And then my this probe's just like, "Smell you later, bro." And this marine's trying to micro here to kill this probe. It's not gonna happen. That probe is long gone. So that is a hero probe right there. So, I need to finish this, this, what I'm saying. So, since I know there's two Terran, and they're going to be attacking with Marines and Marauders, I just know that because that's what everyone does in 3v3, I am going to go 4-gate Zealot Charge. And the cool thing about this build is, against Terran, is of course you get the Charge Lots, which are pretty darn good against, against Terran. But what I really, really like about this build is, say you're going to get a Robotics Bay, if you get a robotics bay, you can only get two gateways because you can't afford to produce off the robotics and the, the additional gateways. But if you go this this just zealot charge, you can actually get the four gateways. So you're going a four gate build. It is the best four gate build, I would say, against Terran. From my experience, if you're still learning the game against Terran, this is the best four gate build where you just go straight to zealot legs and you get four gateways and just produce a massive amount of zealots. Now, I do have one stalker. That's to deal with a Reaper Harass, which is really, really common if there's Terran players in 3v3. And it's just cool because what I'm going to do is I get my second gas, and I put three probes into the second gas. He does scan me, so he does see the Twilight Council go down. That's why I canceled the Twilight Council, because I knew that he would see that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that back up right as the scan goes away. That was just a little mind game. I don't know if it was really actually worth it as far as, you know, are they going to change their build or are they going to think I'm going Void Rays or something like that. But I, I don't, I, you don't necessarily have to do that. And anyways, the cool thing is, is once you get that 200 gas for that zealot charge, you can pull probes off of gas. You're just going to be making zealots pretty much the entire time. And you can alter your build a little bit to, to if you want to leave some probes on gas, you can use it for sentries, and then you can go zealot sentry, but you still don't need all your probes on the gas. So as soon as I get that 200 and I start getting the zealot charge, I'm going to be pulling these probes off of the gas, and I saved up a few chrono boosts, and you definitely want to get that zealot charge out as soon as you can. 
and I am going to be making it in my warp gates right now. And I did pull all the probes off of gas right here. That's just so I can make sure to afford to produce off of four gateways, because four gateways, it's really hard to produce off of it once you are once you have a different tech building because usually four gate is just four gateways so it does look like they're moving out just a little bit and I think we actually catch a tiny glimpse of these units walking by uh, nope, they actually backed up there, so I think we catch a glimpse of them a little bit later. So here comes the attack that I knew was on the way. Just make sure to keep Chrono boosting out your Zealot legs and warping in a ton of Zealots. And I do have this walled in, so when they try and bust up my ramp, they're going to hit kind of a wall here. And actually, the Cybernetics Core isn't that important at this point. So if I lose the Cybernetics Core, not even that big of a deal. I won't be able to get sentries, but at least it will prevent them from getting up into my base. So they are pushing out right now. And the Protoss player is ready. By the way, in this game, there was trying he was trying to do a little proxy here. Um, I'll just go back and show that really quick. It was it was kind of silly, to be honest. I don't know exactly what he had expected from this. But yeah, so we see that pylon and he's trying to warp in cannons and zealots. And yeah, that's just that's just why you want to scout around your base to see exactly what's going on. And of course these marauders are gonna have no trouble killing these, especially with that marauder slope. And he tries to get a cannon here. This was I don't know why he did this. This was really I don't don't do that guys that will never work so the uh, the four gateways are up now and I do have my zealots and I'm trying to get out zealot charge as quickly as I can I should be chrono boosting it one more time there we go and on the timing of this I mean look how many units they have it's not that many compared to how many I have and part of that is, is that their macro sucks but part of it is because as I went straight to that I went straight to the mass zealot and then I can still get the sentries to hold my ramp and unfortunately this ramp is so wide that they can see up the ramp anyways even if you force field it unless I'm just a total noob when it comes to force fielding which is a possibility and I do need a couple shots here with my stalker to soften that up although I lock and like you know, how fast that guy died I actually locked him out but they aren't going to be able to get up my ramp they are it looks like going to be able to kill my server next core which, to be honest, isn't that big of a deal because they're attacking me and my allies are coming here to help and we are going to get a flank on them. So these Marine Marauders, while they do counter gateway units, I have a lot of Zealots. I mean, that is a large, lot of charge lots and you want to try and get a good surround here with, with your allies helping out and then my uh, the sentries up here are actually doing quite a bit of damage on the high ground. And they will, they can still micro your against your Zealots. Even though they have charge, you got to be careful against the, the micro here of the Marines and Marauders. That's exactly what they're doing. Like how he stemmed right there, I should have backed up instantly because you're not going to catch up to them very effectively. You will get a couple of hits in, but they can still micro against you pretty heavily. Here comes my ally Wicked with his Marine Marauder Ball and my Zealots are still getting taken out there. I'm pretty sad about this. Even with Zealot Charge, they aren't the best. I mean, they can still get out Micro there because of that Marauder Slow. So that army is going to go down. I definitely lost the most units there, but Zealots are pretty cheap. And since I had units off of gas, I'm going to have a slight economic advantage anyways as far as minerals go. And so we were able to hold that off pretty easily. I did lose my army, but I, I know now at this point that they are going Marine Marauder. And what I'm thinking of at this point is, okay, look, my ally can go Marine Marauder and my other ally can go Stalkers. So I'm just going to continue getting Mass Zealot. And what's going to happen is is we're gonna run up here I'm gonna allow my my allies who have all range units I'm going to allow them up here it, it can be tempting to run in your zealots but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to guard my ally back here because where the zealots are strongest is if they can attack units not buildings you want them on top of the units so I'm going, I, t I was telling my allies on Skype, okay, you guys attack up the ramp, and I'm going to guard you with my Zealots, because there's no reason to run my Zealots up here. They are just going to die so fast, and they'll get in the way of these ranged units. We do have a Colossus now, by the way, to spot the high ground, as well as the Metabac. So we do have quite a few, quite a, we have a, a tech advantage at this point, as we have Metabacs as well as the Colossus, which the Metabacs, of course, can heal Zealots as well, making them that much more robust. And so once we go up here, I'm going to use my Zealots. I'm just going to keep them on the low ground, and he loads them up in the Metabac by accident. Shows you how often he plays Terran. So we are going to use the Colossus to spot it. I'm going to use the Zealots to guard, because I already know that they're going to be reinforcing this as soon as they can. Homan is getting an expansion, so is the Terran player, but we are getting our expansion as well. TGS taking the high yield. I'm looking to take the normal expansion down here. So, okay, so here we go. So uh, we allowed Wicked to run in first, because the Marauders are much more resilient to the opponent's forces than what the Stalkers would do, because they died to the to the Marauders so quickly. So I'm going to go over here and engage this army. Now, I didn't use force fields. I could have actually trapped a lot of this. And I saw his army is very zealot heavy, so I'm actually going to back up here. They do have a pretty sizable force. However, the positioning of this Colossus is absolutely perfect. He does want to back it up now just a little bit. But able to trap the zealots in there. And now we do have the high ground advantage. 
And while we are getting surrounded, we have a, a much healthier unit composition here. He's trying to run up here to kill the Colossus. He does snipe it, but at what cost? He did lose a lot of his units, and we're just reinforcing this as quickly as possible. A medevac having nothing to heal over here. But the important thing is that my Zealots were able to absorb enough damage that we were able to break down the wall and run up into the main. So now we have reinforcing units from all players just kind of clashing over here as we all have rally points set over here so they aren't actually attacking until they get to that location. And a couple of units down here, even a Zealot going to run up here. Let's see what he can do. Is he going to be a hero? No, he was a zero. But we've killed their ally and all these SCVs are trying to get away. Some of them may just barely get away, but we were able to kill basically take this guy out of the game. However, they do have an expansion advantage. They are up one expansion. Actually, no, they're not. It looks like Wicked got his going, and he has a million mules there to, to redo his economy. I'm the terrible one who hasn't quite expanded just yet. And, oh, oh, I did a super clutch. I, I Hang on, we got to watch this again. I did a super clutch force field right here, so we'll speed it back up again. When his units were running, it was like the best force field of all time. All right, here we go. So all these units are running away. Look how many. There's there's quite a few units there. And then this force field, boom, traps all of them. Even this stalker has nowhere to go. That was such a clutch force field. Always make sure to use your force fields because you you're going to have a lot of sentries with this build. I still haven't even put all my probes back on gas. I'm just going to be focusing on mass zealot because it's really, really good. Um, the they, they die really easily against this mass marine marauder. But what what's good is that they're absorbing the damage while your allies are the ones who are actually killing them. So, a lot of teamwork, a lot of communication in the build that I decided to go. And I ran up here to make sure I actually finished this guy off because sometimes, like, you'll just leave a couple of buildings and then it'll come down to the fact that you left those buildings that they actually end up winning. Now, I did decide to get a couple of Void Rays out just because, I mean, I wanted to make sure that if we go against Colossus, if we go against other Void Rays or something like that, I actually do have good, I mean, Void Rays are a nice robust unit if they're protected by things like Zealots on the ground, and the the Void Ray is a good transition. I mean, look, I can put the, the Void Ray on the Colossus. Void Ray's going to get fully charged, and even when he tries to run away the Colossus, my Void Ray is just going to chase it and boom, kill it, and then I can run back down here with the Void Ray. You want to keep it fully charged as much as possible, of course. And it does look like we are going to be able to break up this ramp as well, as we have just been continuing to reinforce our armies and our... I mean, just, just putting out a lot of pressure. Once we killed our ally, we didn't, we didn't cease the pressure. We just continued to macro up and make units and attack our opponents. And I like how TGS right now has zero APM. He's like, he's like going away to get a drink or something right now at this point. But we are running in here, and this game is going to be pretty much over. Basically, what I want to show you in this game was I was able to get my charge slots out fast enough as well as start working on some sentries, and then that gave me enough time to survive. If I would have gone mass Stalker, this game may have looked a lot different because Stalkers are not good against Marauders. So you really do have to adapt your build to the uh, what your opponent races spawn as. It's really, really crucial. And now I have a couple Void Rays, and that is going to be that. Now, I do really enjoy doing 3v3 games and 4v4, so I do plan to uh, cast a lot more of these games in the future. Like I've always said, my channel is a diverse channel. It is not just for one versus one. But one last thing I do want to mention is thank you to everyone who has subscribed. All you Husketeers are awesome. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the Game Station, I know right now the videos on there suck. Like, they just do. That's straight up. They suck. But we have a lot of cool stuff coming on the way soon, and the videos are actually already done. It's just our launch is officially the 20th, and we have some pretty cool stuff. I think it's cool. So if you have not subscribed to The Game Station, go to youtube.com slash thegamestation, and we, we have some pretty cool stuff there, and I have a pretty big announcement coming up soon. It'll be for my 200,000 subscriber video, but stay tuned for that, and I actually want to cast more games, so I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to get into the next game. That is that, and I will see you guys next time.